Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my starting 11 prediction for our game against West Ham. So in goal, Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson has done well in the games he's played in this season. And I think he's now reliable enough to become our number one. He has got that experience behind him. He endured two successful loans with Sheffield United. And before the start of this season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with the club. So he committed his future with Man United. Dean Henderson was obviously in goal for the game against AC Milan recently. He made some very good saves in that game. But I can assure he should have saved AC Milan's equaliser in injury time. And even Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said he should have saved it. Paul Scholes has come out and he said De Gea should have been replaced by Dean Henderson earlier on in the season. Solskjaer made an admission though earlier on this season regarding Dean Henderson saying that's becoming more and more difficult to leave him out of the team. Uh, De Gea, he's still out at the moment due to personal reasons. At right back, I'm going to go with Anwan Basaka. He's done well in some games this season where he's actually showed some attacking intent. His crossing's been good and he's got into good positions and defensively he's been superb. Anwan Basaka is our first choice right back. He's the only recognised right back. <coughs> Sorry, it just went off then. Yes, as I, as I was saying, he's the only recognised right back. Um, he did play against AC Milan. I don't think he was that good, to be honest with you. Defensively, at times, he did OK. And he did show a bit of attacking intent. We got Anwan Basaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace in the summer of 2019. The two centre halves, I'm gonna go with Eric Bay and Harry Maguire. Eric Bay obviously played against AC Milan and to his credit put a good performance out defensively. Bay was good and he was also very effective in the air. I certainly prefer Bay to Lindelof, but my element of concern about Eric Bay is injury prone, so in that aspect he is a liability. Harry Maguire, he obviously played in the game against AC Milan. Missed an absolute sitter. You know, he hit the post from a yard out. That's the worst miss I've seen in football history. Harry Maguire... He's enjoyed some good games this season, but he's enjoyed bad games. I can assure he wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. At left-back, I'm going to go with Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw didn't start against AC Milan, but he did come on in the game. Luke Shaw is our first choice left back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez last summer. Because I thought when we got Alex Tellez, Alex Tellez was going to be our first choice left back. But at one point he did have COVID. But I prefer Shaw to Tellez because Shaw gets forward better. And Shaw has been our player of the season by far. He showed very good attacking intent. He's made good overlapping runs, he's got into good positions, he's put good crosses into the box and defensively, Luke Shaw's been good. He's had a good career at Manchester United apart from his injuries. He's been at the club over six years. In the midfield, 
I'm going to go with Fred and Scott McTominay. Fred didn't start against AC Milan, but he come on. Fred has done well in some games this season, where he's actually got forward well, his passing's been good, and he's created chances. Fred is not at that level as we want him to be at as yet, but can he emulate into that level? He's been at the club now a few years. We got Fred in a deal worth £52 million from Shatter the Nesk. Got to say, he was a world-class player during his time in Ukraine. And Scott McTominway, um, he's played against AC Milan. I thought he was actually poor and looked out of his depth at times. McTominway has had good games this season. And he's a decent player. His best game by far this season was a 6-2 win against Leeds because he scored twice in that game and he also got an assist. But Tommy Way is not at the level as wanting to be it as yet. I've just said the same thing regarding Fred, but can Tom Way emulate to that level? But Tom Way has been part of the club for several years. Uh, just, a just after the first lockdown last year, that Tom and Way signed a five-year contract. <clears throat> Ahead of Fred and Tom and Way, I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes obviously played against AC Milan. I think he enjoyed a pretty good game, Bruno Fernandes against Milan. Um, obviously got the assist for Mad Dilo Triore's goal. It was a lovely ball as well from Bruno Fernandes. In most of Bruno Fernandes' games, he has been very, very consistent. There's been a few games, though, where he has looked off the pace. Do you think at some point he needs a rest? Earlier on this season, Fernandes denied that he needed a rest because he wants to help the club win trophies. Now, recent narratives have said that Bruno Fernandes is refusing to sign a new contract until he has assurances over the club's transfer plans. He says we are willing to double his wages to £200,000 a week. Fernandes's current contract expires in 2025. There's an option to extend for a further 12 months. We initially paid £47 million for him, but with add-ons included, it risen up to just over £67 million. Fernandez has won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. But he is our best player and is the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go with Daniel James. Uh, Daniel James did play against AC Milan. I don't think he enjoyed the best of games. He missed an absolutely fantastic chance, Daniel James. He put it wide. But Daniel James has been playing a lot in recent weeks. I'm surprised in that aspect because Daniel James lost his place in the team uh, for a while and there was obviously narratives of him possibly leaving Man United. We got Daniel James in a deal worth £18 million. We do put him on the right-hand side a lot, but I think he's actually more effective on that left-hand side. I think that's his predominant position. On the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Ahmad Dilo Traore. I think we're going to give him his full debut against West Ham. Ahmad Dilo Traore came on against AC Milan and scored his first goal for the club. It was a very, very good header. We got Ahmad Dilo Traore in a deal worth £37 million. We paid £19 million up front and the rest was in add-ons. Like I said, he looks a good asset for the first team. Up top. I'm going to go with Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood played against AC Milan. I think he created very, very little. 
and that seldom happens when it comes to Mason Greenwood. In the vast majority of his games since he broke into the first team squad, he's been very, very consistent. Solskjaer has been defending Mason Greenwood a lot this season. Didn't really have much of a perception on him earlier on in the season because he was in and out of the team. Uh, because at one point he had personal issues, one point he had injury and at one point he had illness. Earlier on this season Greenwood signed a new four year contract with Man United. But Greenwood has been at United for several years. He's been a United player since the age of seven. You know, made his senior debut in 2019 and he's made 80-odd first-team appearances. So that's how I think we could line up against West Ham on Sunday. Now, our season is back on thin ice because we are missing key players. I think we've got seven players that are injured. Now, Marcus Rashford... He's a doubt for this game on Sunday. Obviously didn't play any part against AC Milan. Solskjaer's hopeful Rashford will be back for the second leg against Milan next week. Marcus Rashford has got an ankle injury. He sustained it in our 2-0 win against Man City. He did have the scan on his ankle. There's no ligament damage on his ankle. It's just bruised and swollen. Edison Cavani, he's not going to be available for this game. Solskjaer's confirmed that. Uh, Cavani didn't play any part against AC Milan. He's a miss because he's made a fantastic impact since he's come in. Uh, the most recent player to get injured is Anthony Martial. He came off with, was it a hip injury against AC Milan? Now apparently he's having the scan on his hip. Hopefully the injury is not too severe. I think Martial did quite well against Milan. Um, he had a fantastic chance that produced a good save from Donna Rummer. Martial also put a good performance out in the game against Man City. You know, he had two fantastic chances in that game and he should have converted at least one of them. But for the vast majority of this season, Anthony Martial has been out of form. But, you know, Solskjaer came out and said that he's been impressed with his work rate. And he's backed him to rediscover his form. You know, last season, Martial was good. He was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Martial has been at the club over five years. A lot of United fans are saying we should sell him in the summer. Paul Pogba, he's out with a thigh injury. Uh, Solskjaer the other week confirmed a new return date for Paul Pogba. He said he's hopeful that he will be back before the March international break. The last game Paul Pogba played was the 3-3 draw with Everton. Before he got this thigh injury, Pogba, we was getting the best out of him. Earlier on this season, he was out with an ankle injury. He was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. He is a big miss because we do lack creativity in that midfield without him and we are far too defensive. Now, Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. You know, he's been relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid. PSG have been in for him and his former club Juventus have been in for him. He endured four very good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. And he said earlier on this season, we revealed our asking price for Pogba and it was £100 million. We won't get £100 million for him. If we sell him in the summer, I think we'd get from between 60 to 70 million. There was narratives coming out the other week saying that Paul Pogba is open to staying at Man United after making a transfer U-turn and he's willing to discuss a new contract. 
And Solskjaer suggested earlier on this season that Paul Pogba could sign a new contract and he said he's happy at the club. Earlier on this season, we did trigger that one-year extension on his contract, so he's under contract with Man United until June 2022. As it stands at the moment, Pop is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. Uh, Mini Oriola, his agent, he's desperate to get his client out of the football club. He did say, though, earlier on this season, he's got no intentions of destabilising his client's season at Man United, and he made an admission saying that he's working quietly on Paul Popper's transfer to avoid offence, because Mino Riola doesn't have a good relationship with the club, and he's being criticised a lot. He made the announcement back in December regarding Paul Popper, and Solskjaer was not happy with Mini Oriola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Uh, Juan Mata, he's out with injury, but he doesn't get in our team anyway. Uh, Phil Jones, he's still out. He's been out of injury for over a year, but he doesn't get in our team. Donny van der Beek, he's got a muscular problem. Uh, Donny van der Beek has played nowhere near as much as I expected anyway. You know, most of Donny van der Beek's appearances have come from the bench when he's played. He's only started two games in the league. I'm really surprised in that aspect. You know, when we got him in last summer, I expected him to play a hell of a lot of games and start a lot of games. Well, we have got quite a lot of midfielders. But Solskjaer said earlier on this season that Donny van der Beek is unhappy because of his lack of game time. But he actually promised Donny van der Beek more game time at the club. You know, we got him in a deal worth £40 million. Paid £35 million up front and there was £5 million in add-ons. He's got a contract with the football club until 2025. But yeah, I think Solskjaer will make some changes in this game from the 1-1 draw with AC Milan. It was a very average performance against AC Milan. I thought AC Milan dominated large periods of the game. You know, AC Milan... Had two goals disallowed, one for offside from Raphael and the other one from a handball from Kessier. But obviously now AC Milan have the upper hand because they have got that vital away goal. Uh, we won our last league game. We beat Manchester City 2-0. And that was a very, very good result. It wasn't only a good result against City, it was also a very, very good performance. You know, we could have won by more than two goals. And I love I love the way that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approached that game against Man City because he showed tactical flexibility. I was definitely surprised in that aspect. But we ended Man City's 21-match winning run and we are unbeaten in 22 Premier League away games. So we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. I thought Solskjaer's substitutions were definitely clueless against AC Milan. But uh, this will be a tough game against West Ham on Sunday. You know, West Ham are enjoying a very, very good season. They're fifth in the Premier League. And that's very, very good to their standards. They're in this top four race. I don't see West Ham getting the top four because I don't think they're good enough to get the top four. If West Ham were to win on Sunday, they'd be three points behind us with a game in hand. I've got to credit David Moyes, he's doing very, very well in his second spell at West Ham. Didn't do so well though in his first spell at West Ham. Uh, Moyes has made quite a few signings since he became West Ham manager. 
Obviously brought Jesse Lingard in on loan. Jesse Lingard's made a fantastic impact since he's got, gone out on loan to West Ham. I think he's out at the moment due to personal reasons, it said. Uh, also, Moyes brought Ben Rama in. Uh, also brought Craig Dawson in and he's done well at West Ham. Also brought Vladimir Kufal in. Brought Frederick Ibsen in. And also brought Suchek in. And Suchek's made a fantastic impact at West Ham. So they're the signings Moyes has brought in. Um, Pablo Farnells, he's a good player for West Ham. He could cause us problems at the weekend. You know, they've got that Mikel Antonio, who's good. Uh, Jared Bowen, Lanzini. They've got Mark Noble, who's still there. Mark Noble's been at West Ham for several years. Uh, Declan Rice, he's very, very good. Declan Rice is predominantly a holding midfielder. We've inquired about his availability before. Aaron Cresswell's a very, very good left-back. I think he's regarded as one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. Um, Issy Diop, he's a very good centre-half. Fabianski isn't a bad goalkeeper. Uh, West Ham, by the way, have got some injuries. Uh, Yarmolenko's out with injury. Ogbonna's out with injury. Randolph's out with injury, Masaku's out with injury, and Ryan Fredericks is out with injury. We're looking to beat West Ham for the third time this season, because we've already beaten them twice this season. We've beaten them in the FA Cup fifth round, 1-0 after extra time. That was a goal from Scott McTominway. And we're beating them 3-1 at the London Stadium earlier on this season in the league. And the game at Old Trafford last season between us and West Ham was 1-1. West Ham's last win at Old Trafford was back in 2007, which is, what, 14 years ago. So, yeah, uh, David Moyes will be reuniting with Man United yet again on Sunday. Uh, don't forget, we did have David Moyes for 10 months. He enjoyed the shortest tenure um, at the club. Moyes is the worst manager we've ever had. We finished seventh under the David Moyes era. That's the lowest we've finished in the Premier League era. Moyes has done very, very bad at the vast majority of the clubs he's managed. But I've got to say Moyes did very, very well during his time with Everton. He was a long-serving man manager at Everton. He enjoyed 11 years with them. And now he's doing well in his second spell at West Ham. But I've got to say, he was bad at us. He was bad at Real Sociedad. He was also bad at Sunderland. I think he got Sunderland relegated. Now after West Ham, we do play AC Milan in the second leg. And then it is Leicester in the FA Cup. Then it's the international break. But um, there is quite a lot of United fans that are only going to Solskjaer out. I can assure he's not the long-term manager for Man United. But I think he does deserve at least another season at the club. Um, I can almost assure, or should I say I can assure, that he will get a new contract in the summer. I think Man United are set to hand him a new three-year contract. He said earlier on this season that Solskjaer's future was in doubt because he admitted that nobody had spoke to him regarding a new contract. He's into the final 18 months of his current contract. Woodward recently did a statement and it said the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear so in that aspect the board are backing Solskjaer. I've already told you my biggest concern about Solskjaer is his decision making. Because in a lot of his games at Man United, he's been tactically naive. Yeah, there's been some games where he's showed tactical flexibility, but he's got to show tactical flexibility persistently. 
And the other concern, he hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. I probably think we give Solskjaer the job too soon. I think a lot of Man United fans will agree me agree with me on that aspect, or even we made a mistake giving him the job at all. Maybe we should have waited until the end of that particular season to decide on whether to give him the job. We give him the job permanently though because he did very, very well in that three month period when he was the interim manager. Don't forget he won fourteen games out of nineteen in all competitions. Solskjaer must win a trophy at Man United because he's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017 and a club of our stature need to be winning trophies. Like I've said, the FA Cup is a chance of a trophy, the Europa League is a chance of a trophy. We're not going to win the Premier League, we know that, we're too far behind City like Solskjaer said after the Man City win. But at one point we was in the title race and at one point we was top of the Premier League but there was a period where we dropped too many points so obviously we're no longer in the title race. I'd, we won't win the title under Solskjaer anyway. I think we'll win, we'll win another title at some point but I just don't know when. <laughs> you know what I mean? But top four is our aim in the Premier League this season, definitely. And... I can assure we'll get the top four. You know, top four's not guaranteed yet, though. You know, Solskjaer's been Manchester United manager over two years. Reflecting now on his being at the club, he has gained some managerial experience and he has learnt quite a bit on the job. But I think the club is too big for him to manage, even though he knows the culture of the club. Because Solskjaer is a club legend and great player for the club for 11 years, flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. You know, I've got to credit Solskjaer in a few aspects. You know, he did well last season, his first full season. He's brought some good players in. And he's endured four transfer windows as permanent Man United manager so far. But Solskjaer hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in as yet. He's got rid of a lot of players since he came in. You know, he's got us to the FA Cup quarter final in his second full season, which is this season. Got us to the Europa League last 16. Got us to the EFL Cup semi final. Lost 2 0 to Man City. We've got a very, very good away record. And, you know, there has been periods where he's got the best out of the team in some games. You know, he's improved certain players. So, yeah, you go. But this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career because we do need to make signings. I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer. And the two priorities is a new centre-half and a new forward. Definitely. I think there's a good chance Solskjaer will get the backing that he deserves in the summer. Because obviously we've got a director of football in. It's John Murtough. He's our first ever director of football, by the way. But I said we needed the director of football because it's one of the structural changes that we need at the club. We was in for a director of football for a while and John Murtough knows the club inside out because he's been at Man United for seven years. And obviously Darren Fletcher, he's now the technical director. But Solskjaer's not been backed enough so far in the transfer windows he has endured. Solskjaer sent a transfer warning to Man United fans saying we may not do business as usual in the summer obviously because of the pandemic but Solskjaer said he's only interested in bringing in players that will be a perfect fit for the club. We're going to focus on both this summer aren't we? You know, we're going to focus on the incomings and the out. 
goings because there's still more players we need to get rid of. You know, there's a good chance we'll offload Matter in the summer. There's a good chance Cavani's going to leave the club of what his father's come out and said and that. And um, reports from Argentina said Cavani's decided to leave after just a season at the club and apparently he wants to go to Boca Juniors. Pogba could still possibly leave in the summer. Uh, we could sell Matic in the summer. You know, Phil Jones, we could sell him. Could Romero leave? Uh, there's a good chance that we'll sell De Gea so we can make Dean Henderson our number one. Do you think we'll offload Axel to Anzebe because he doesn't get in our team? So there you go. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.